insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 75, Personal Freedom. I am your host, Joseph Whalen, and my mature and responsible co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? Pretty good. Anything exciting this week? Um, I was just doing another um, virtual camp this week. I just finished it up today. Which was a Minecraft story, um, land world kind of thing. Um, where we basically told a story through Minecraft, so. Cool. Did you have fun? Yeah, I did. Nice. So this week we are talking about personal freedoms. Do you know what we mean by personal freedoms? Um, I think by personal freedoms, you might mean, in a way, sort of responsibilities, like we kind of talked about before, like, um, like how when you're younger, there are more boundaries, and when you get older, you get to release some of those boundaries, that kind of thing. Yeah, kind of like that. You know, what we're defining as personal freedoms for the purpose of this discussion is uh, that freedom helps teens learn more about how to take care of themselves and interact well with others. Granting too much freedom is just as bad as granting too little freedom. So we're going to talk about what some of the uh, interesting facts are about teens and personal freedom. Then we will talk about questions, common questions um, about personal freedom and try to provide some answers to some of those questions. But basically, this discussion today is more about how personal freedom affects you and and how it affects teens and how parents need to regulate the personal freedoms that they do give because too much of it or not enough of it can cause problems. So are we ready to start? Sure. All right, let's get into it. So the first thing that we're going to talk about are five facts about teenage personal freedom. And this comes from a website called iMom, which we've used in the past. So the first fact they talk about is freedom wields a greater influence than parents or peers. Now, as a teen, do you find that your desire for freedom or the allowance of freedom gives you is more influential over you than, you know, what mommy or daddy might want you to do? Um, what exactly do you mean by that? I don't really understand too well. Well, like, for instance, if you have the freedom to uh, go to bed when you want, and, you know, in the summertime you don't really have a set schedule that you have to worry about, so you can go to bed whenever you want, mommy and daddy may go to bed at 10 o'clock at night, and you're allowed to stay up late. Do you feel compelled to abide by the self-imposed bedtimes that mommy and daddy put on ourselves? Or do you just do whatever you want when it comes to that type of freedom? I mean, I know that I need to sleep, especially after learning that if you don't get enough sleep, you don't, re- you, not enough sleep can definitely turn out pretty bad. So having the freedom to choose when I go to sleep. I go to sleep, like, I mean, I go to sleep after you guys, but not long after. Like, I'll stay up for a couple other, for a couple extra minutes before you guys, and then I'll just go to sleep 
um, when I feel like I get tired or if I'm just too bored and I don't have anything else to do and I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to go sleep because that's when my brain is for some reason in full tact. Gotcha. Okay. Well, the study here did a survey uh, and they found that over the years, many studies uh, and parents have asked whether parents or peers exert a bigger influence over kids' behavior. And the research suggests that questions, uh, this question misses the main point. When freedom is added to the mix, it seems to far outstrip the influence of any person. So here's a couple of questions that they had. So the first question they asked was, when you do something that your parents would disapprove of, what's the best description for the reason that you do it? And there were three answers. And I'm going to ask you what yours is before I tell you what these numbers were. So the first answer was, I'm just being rebellious against my parents. The second was, I'm just doing what my friends want me to do. And the third was, I'm just pursuing my freedom and my ability to do what I want to do. Of those three, which would you answer? I'd probably answer with the third one, because for the first one, I don't want to be rebellious against you guys. I'm not a rebellious teen. I try to stick to your boundaries. Um, two, uh, I don't really get influenced by my friends to really do anything rebellious or anything you would disapprove of, because... One, my friends aren't like that, and they don't pressure me to do things that um, would upset you guys. And two, I don't really have too much contact with them now, so I'd go with the third option. And you would be in the majority. The 89% of those surveyed had the same answer. Wow. So that's a, a, an, an instance where, you know, freedom itself may override, you know, parental desire. Mm -hmm. uh, the next big question that they asked in the survey was think of something that you really want to do that your parents might disapprove of. Which statement most closely describes you? And there's three again here. So you, you pick which one best describes you. If I want to do something, I'll usually find a way to do it no matter what my parents think or say. Option two, even if I really want to do something, and even if my parents would never know, I generally don't do it if they would disapprove. And the third one, if I want to do something, I'll usually find a way to do it, although I'd hope my parents wouldn't think I was being too bad. Which of those would you say fit you best? Um, I'd say maybe the middle. I don't really want to rebel against you guys, and I don't really want to do anything that you disapprove of. Um, so I would probably fit in the middle category. And 31% of those who responded said the same thing. Uh, the higher majority was the last one. You know, they'll do it, but they hope the parents wouldn't think they're being too bad. So just, you know, the, the original survey itself didn't include freedom in there. Uh, it was more who influenced more parents or peers. And the study basically said, well, you're not asking the right question. Mm -hmm. So the next fact that they had, which I thought was kind of funny, was that under the influence of freedom, kids may do stupid things. <laughs> now, that's kind of blunt uh, and to the point. But they say, like, addicts under the influence of a real drug... Kids get high on the thrill of freedom and may not be thinking clearly. To complicate matters, it's not just the high of freedom at work. It turns out, and we say this as respectfully as possible, I'm quoting from the survey, our teens are not only addicted, they are also brain deficient. And I'll explain. Okay. Science demonstrates that the frontal lobe of the brain, the area that allows judgment and co of consequences and control of impulses, doesn't fully develop until after teen years. So in the absence of a fully functioning frontal lobe, teenage brains rely more on the centers that control emotion, which in effect means they give it much more give in much more easily to impulses. How would you describe your impulse control? Um, 
like, I mean, I, okay, so, there have been times where, um, there was a chance that I could have done something rebellious or something that I generally didn't want to do, but, um, considering, well, but, considering the consequences that my brain developed, I wouldn't do them. Okay. So, so, is that what you mean? Well, or? when you're faced with something that you want to do or something that you want or something that you want to buy or a snack that you want to have at night or whatever it is, something that's tempting you, uh, how successful do you find that you are at avoiding the impulse of giving into that temptation? Um, well, I can definitely say from experience for buying stuff, I would spend a really, I'm that kind of person who would spend a really long time deciding, do I really want this? Is it worth the money? Stuff like that. So you're very analytical when it comes to purchases. Mm -hmm. What about less serious things, less consequential things? Like snacks? Yeah. Uh, I kind of, that doesn't really work for me i just have that impulse like you know what whatever i find is what i find i'll just eat but i always make but sometimes i do make sure to ask you guys um just for um confirmance just for uh confirmation confirmation yeah that's yeah. the word okay well that's good to know so fact three that they talk about in the study is that kids deeply fear losing their freedom once we understand just how much teenagers revel in their first taste of real freedom, it shouldn't be surprising that, like other addicts, they're also dealing with a deep fear that we will forever take away that freedom. An enraged teenager's out-of-proportion response to your words or actions may be a sign that you set off the ultra-sensitive loss-of-freedom radar. How do you feel about the prospect of losing what freedom mommy and daddy have given you. Is that something that's a real fear for you? I mean, I really do appreciate the freedom you guys have given me. And with some of the freedoms, I would be scared that you guys would take it away because it would show that I wasn't responsible enough to have it. And it would just cause another, a whole loophole of worry and fear and just a just down... Just a downward spiral. Now, have we ever had an instance where we've had to take away any freedoms that we gave you? I mean... I'd only say that you only put restrictions on, like... Um, every day at 8, stop going on devices and then go watch a movie with mommy. But that wasn't really taking away too much freedom. I was able to, um work with it so um uh other than that i really don't know too many times we had to take away my freedom and i would agree i mean fortunately we don't have disciplinary problems with you so we've never had the need to revoke any freedoms that we've given you in fact if anything i think you've continued to take on more freedoms and more responsibilities which you know it's a testament to you so fact four says that teens will do anything to get freedom and avoid losing it, including deceiving themselves and you, driven by the all-consuming quest for freedom and the intense fear that will revoke it. Even teenagers, who are generally good and trustworthy, sometimes resort to bad behavior. They may downplay problems, fool themselves into thinking that they weren't doing anything wrong, hide things, and even lie to us in an effort to secure and protect their independence. Have you ever had a situation where you've had to, to try to deceive mommy and daddy so that you didn't get in trouble or lose a freedom or have some consequence imposed on you? I mean, for some reason, that would trigger whenever I would accidentally, like, spill a glass of water and... and I would just get worried, like, oh, God, they're going to be mad at me. They're going to think I did something bad. I'd try to clean it up, and it wouldn't really work. Then I'd have to end up getting you guys anyway. So you've never actually tried. You've basically tried to solve the problem yourself in that situation. Mm -hmm. You've not tried to hide it from us. 
I mean, I didn't want you guys to know that I ended up having that. Okay. Um, so, um, because I didn't want you guys to think I was clumsy or I'd make a lot of mistakes and that I wouldn't learn from them or anything, so I tried to solve them as quickly as possible. And they aren't normally the best solutions, especially when I'm in that panic mode. So they asked, the study asked a similar question. They asked, do you ever hide negative information from your parents because you're worried about how they'll react? And again, there's three answers to pick from here. And I think we know yours already, but we'll just throw it out there. Answer one, I rarely or never hide those things from them. Answer two, yes, I often don't tell them those things because of that. And answer three is, yes, I sometimes don't tell them those things because of that. Which would best fit you? I mean, I don't really keep too much from you guys, so I'd say the first one. Yeah, and that's the lowest percentage. Most kids are in that last percentage there where they... They sometimes don't tell their parents about these types of things. But like a good example would be if you got a bad grade in school or you failed a test or something like that. And then, you know, it came home in your folder and mommy or daddy had to sign it and you sort of throw it in with a bunch of other papers so that we didn't look at it. That type of, of omission, I guess. Well, I mean... Whenever, like, I, when I did get a bad grade, when I realized I got a B in math in the first mugging period, I was worried on telling you guys, but I ended up just slipping it out anyway. I just, I mean, honestly, I seem shaky when I'm trying to say it, and it, and I need to normally take a deep breath when saying it, but it ends up getting out anyway. Right. Okay. Well, we appreciate your honesty. Question five says, ironically, too much freedom can be scary and our kids want to involve us in their quest. After this fairly brutal reality check, a few, uh, the good news is that even freedom intoxicated teens realize the unlimited freedom isn't a good idea. One girl in a study eloquently captured the perspective so many teens shared by saying, my parents are really strict and I'd wish they lighten up a bit. But if they didn't give me any rules, I don't. I I know they didn't love me. We expect some boundaries. But how do you react to that? Does that does that resonate with you? Does that make sense with you? I mean, yeah. On the one hand, you want to have freedoms, and you don't want your parents to be completely overprotective or strict on, strict on you. But if you don't have those boundaries, it would seem like your parents wouldn't care if you like stuck like something metal in an outlet something like that like wow, if that's you extreme. <laughs> <laughs> but do you see the restrictions that mommy and daddy put on you as um a hindrance to you or a like if we didn't put these rules in place and these restrictions on you would you feel like we didn't care enough to do that I mean, kind of, because if you don't have the restrictions and you can basically do whatever you want, it would show that the parents would really not care on what you were doing, but it would also show that they probably don't really care that much about where you are or how you're feeling or how you're doing in school or anything like that. So by daddy being an overbearing, overprotective father, I show that I love you by doing that, right? Sort of, yeah. Okay, good. So there was a series of questions that they had here. Uh, and it was really the questions were kind of directed towards parents trying to guide them here. But I'm curious what your answers would be. Okay. So the first question is, what should teens be doing during their free time? What do you think teens should do during their free time? Honestly, anything that they enjoy, really, um, and anything that can help them help um, anything, any problems they would have, like anything socially, mentally, anything like that. So the experts uh, that conducted this study answered it slightly different. They said basically a variety of things is probably the closest anyone can come to the, a good answer. It's an almost sure sign of trouble when a teenager seems obsessed with doing only one thing 
whether it's listening to music or doing homework. Well-adjusted teens enjoy a variety of interests and activities. Some adult-directed clubs, like Cub Scouts and stuff like that. Some involving only peers, like going to the movies or parties or ball games with your friends. And others that are solitary, like, you know, reading or, or hobbies. So, you know, basically, they're backing what you're saying here. You should be doing what you enjoy, but not obsessively. Do you think there's anything that you do obsessively at this point? Um... Uh, not entirely sure. I think maybe... The Sims? Well, maybe Sims and just maybe character design. I've been doing that a lot. Okay, fair enough. The next thing they ask is, should I allow my teenager to do, quote, unproductive things, such as driving around in a car? Which obviously doesn't apply to you just yet. But what do you think about that? Do you think you should be allowed to do unproductive things? I mean, yeah, but not too often. Like, you can do unproductive things when you're bored, because no one really wants to be bored, especially now, so it's a good way to keep you entertained, at least. But you can always back it up with a few productive, small productive things, just to keep them on their toes. And I think that's a good answer. They say unproductive doesn't necessarily mean harmful, But these behaviors should constitute a minor part of the teen's total activity. So, spot on with what you said there. Mm -hmm. The next thing they ask is, how can I set reasonable curfew? Well, I would, although I don't actually have um, curfews, I would have to think of it as sort of the movie time thing. Um, I think... And bedtimes. So I think reasonable curfews, like, they can get slightly extended if the teen has been following them well and they're doing well. And, or it's something with age. Like, but if they do end up abusing that, then you'd have to either have consequences or prove to them that although you were going to incre- although you're going to add a few um, minutes off of the curfew, um, then you, um, at that point, but since they weren't really following it, they, um, they'd have to stay with the same one, um, for a little while longer. And, and I think you're spot on. The study basically says the same thing. It should be age specific. If it goes off without a problem, you should, they should be able to, you know, increase those curfews. Uh, so I, I think you, you hit the nail on the head there. And the last question that they have here is one that you had already commented on when we talked about it before the show. When is it okay to let my teen start to date? When do you think it's okay? So do you mean like play dates or actual dating? Actual dating. Um, you said when I'm 16. That's the when I can start dating. Did I say that? I was pretty sure I said 26. What? 26? I thought you said 16. I think mommy said 16. <sighs> and you- So what do you think? What do you what do you think is a, is fair? When when should that determination be made? Well, for one, I don't think it should be I think that all that every single gender should have an exact time to where they're supposed to date. And not the guys are allowed to date sooner than the girls because the gir- because the fathers are overprotective of the girls. Okay, so you think when we make that determination, it doesn't really matter when it is, as long as it would be a pro- applied evenly across the board by gender. Yes, because apparently whenever there's a female child and a male parent involved, for some reason, they're not allowed to date until they're actual, until, like, they're mid, they're mid-twenties. Well, and that's because the male fathers involved in the female daughter's decision knows what the male boys at her age are like. So that male father is more overly protective because 
there are far more predatory boys at that age than there are girls at that age. Yeah, but I don't like how it's been subjected by gender. I can understand your point from that view. Well, the subjection by gender has nothing to do with the trusting you, Mm -hmm. and it really has nothing to do with your gender. It has everything to do with the uncontrollable animal instincts of the opposite gender. Whereas by this point in time, girls are far more mature at this age than boys are. So as a result, you're kind of being punished because boys are immature. So it's not really a negative against girls. It's, a, it's really a negative against boys. You need to be protected more because of the boys, ah. not because there's anything wrong with you. Okay, so then it would still, I'd still support the claim that you'd probably want to wait a few years. Absolutely. Like all genders, every single child should wait. I, I'll be honest with you. I didn't date until I was in uh, junior in high school. I just didn't have the time for it. I had so many other things going on. I didn't have the time. I didn't have the interest. And you know me, I'm not particularly social now. I was even less social in high school. Mm. So I don't think there's any rush to start dating for anything. The time that you have in high school now is a blip on the radar of your life. And the number of people who meet someone in high school and wind up marrying their high school sweetheart and having, you know, living happily ever after with them is infinitesimally small. Yeah. Most people get married and stay with their partners for a long period of time. It's something that generally happens outside of high school. So there's no rush to getting into a relationship. There's more important things that you need to worry about. You need to worry about your school. You know, you need to worry about what's going on at home and taking care of your responsibilities. This is a chance for you to grow at this point in time, and relationships are something that complicates that. Yeah, and everyone still needs to know if they want to date or not, who they want to date, and stuff like that. They're still fine trying to figure out who they are at that point, so they need time to figure that out. So I definitely think my age should definitely not be dating at this point. You still need time to figure out who you are and what your preference is. Absolutely, I agree 100%. Now, without knowing it, I've completely thrown the show off the rails because I skipped the transition between the segments here, and I actually ran through the entire second segment already with these questions. Oh, great. (laughs) Yeah, I kind of noticed. So I'm actually out of material right now. Um, We're not even exactly a half hour into it at this point in time because apparently I paced the show wrong. Was there anything from a personal freedom standpoint that you wanted to talk about did you have questions about my personal freedoms when i was a kid uh any questions about your personal freedoms anything along those lines i mean sure um i'm 13 now how many how what were your personal freedoms like when you were 13 my parents were very laid back uh well my father was strict but he was largely absent so anything i got i got from my mom's side of things and they never put restrictions on me like i kind of intuitively knew what i could and couldn't do and the advantage that i had was i had three older brothers so i saw what they were able to do and when they were able to do it so the assumption kind of was okay i'm playing by the same rules so my parents never laid down any rules I just did this, the things that my brothers did when they did it, you know? Mm-hmm. Alrighty, so you basically played follow the leader. Pretty much, yeah. That's the advantage of being the youngest one. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, let me think. No time to think, just ask. Really, just... <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you said we're not even in half a half hour in. You want the conversation to run long? Give me some time to think. Well, I mean, if we don't have anything else to talk about, we don't need to drag it out. I just didn't know if you had any questions that you had for me. Do you think you have a lot of freedom now? I mean, 
mean, yeah, like, I'm able to stay, I can stay home if you guys need to go out. You just, you know that I, I can make my own food when I need to. Um, I'm able to do my own work and I even set some restrictions myself. So. Are there any freedoms that you wish you had that you don't have? Uh, not really that I can think of. I mean, it'd be nice to drive, but I'm not old enough, so. Yeah, I mean, that's a state thing. I can't really do anything about that. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I mean, I can, I mean, I'm, I'm able to wait. I don't have to drive now. I'm still kind of worried about, okay, how am I going to work with all of this? Like that kind of thing. Well, and and right now is a tough time to be talking about personal freedom because, you know, with the quarantine conditions we're under, uh, all of our freedoms are, you know, necessarily curtailed at this point in time. You know, we can't go out. We can't do this. We have to wear our masks. You know, it's all for the greater good, but it's all imposing on the freedoms that we normally enjoy. Mm -hmm. Do you find the restrictions that we're under now with COVID? uh, Do you find that that is robbing you of some of the freedoms that you normally would have? Uh, Not actually. Um, Since I'm not actually old enough to go to places on my own or know how or have any means of transportation besides going with you guys, I don't really think going out was really a problem, and especially being an introvert, I really didn't like going out in the first place. So having to do the whole quarantine, I haven't really been having too many problems. I'm pretty sure other introverts can kind of feel the same. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I have I have the same mindset mostly. I know the inability to interact with others has has posed a problem on a lot of people, mommy included, because mommy is a very social person. Yeah. But, you know, for me, I'm, I'm indifferent. Like, if, if I have to socialize, I will, but I generally don't actively search it out. Yeah. So the restrictions we're under now aren't overly restrictive. Yeah. I mean, introverts alike can probably agree with us saying that quarantine... Re- the whole quarantine hasn't really done much for us. It's just, if anything, the people who really hated socializing and wouldn't do it even if they had to were probably like, hey, now I don't have to socialize when I don't want to. Like I that agree. kind of thing. What about your friend? Do you think your, your friends have the level of freedom that they think they deserve or that they would desire at this point in time? Or do you think that they may be overly free or less free than you i mean my friend delana um i think she's pretty well off with her own freedom she's slightly younger than me but she has honestly pretty nice freedoms for being um a few years younger than i am um and my friend chris he um he actually um when we were doing school and his parents still had to go to work, they trusted him to stay home by himself while he was doing his schoolwork. So well, I'd good. say he's pretty well off with his own freedoms. Okay, so it sounds like, you know, for the most part, it sounds like most of the kids that you know have similar level of freedom as you do. All right, well, I think that's really all we had to talk about today. We'll uh, take a quick break, come back, and... uh Get your closing remarks and any shout-outs that you have. Go for your closing remarks. Alrighty, so... For my closing remarks today... Um, to all the parents out there who do have teens and you're still struggling to kind of find the perfect balance of responsibility and restrictions, just know... Too little or too mu- most sl- like most things in life, too little or too much is bad. You need to find the right in the center. You need to have decent restrictions, but also have allow your teen to have decent freedoms. Like you can allow them to stay up, but you can like tell them to go off technology at a certain time. Um, 
something similar to that. Okay. Makes sense. Uh, I think that was all for uh, this week. Before we go, I would invite you to subscribe to us, uh, to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, uh, pretty much any podcast clearinghouse out there. If you're looking for our audio versions, we are listed under Insights into Teens, and our video versions are listed under Insights into Things. Uh, we would welcome your feedback. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can hit us on Twitter at insights underscore things. Our videos, high res videos, are on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. You can get us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. You can get our audio podcasts at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. Uh, we stream six days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. Or you can get links to all those things on our website at www.insightsintothings.com. And you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights into Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother, Sam. Nicely done. And another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye.